Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the stages of DNA replication. You should then be able to describe the role of the key enzymes involved in this process. In the last video we looked at the structure of DNA. We saw that DNA is a double-stranded molecule and each strand consists of a polymer of nucleotides joined by a sugar phosphate backbone. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds which act between the bases on each of the strands. Remember that guanine always hydrogen bonds with cytosine and adenine always hydrogen bonds with thymine. Scientists call this complementary base pairing. The two strands then twist together to form a double helix. Now one key idea you need to understand is that every time a cell undergoes cell division, all of its DNA is copied. This process is called DNA replication. In this video I'm going to take you through the stages of DNA replication and it's really important that you learn all the stages. In the first stage, the enzyme DNA helicase attaches to the DNA molecule. DNA helicase causes the hydrogen bonds between complementary bases to break. This causes the two polynucleotide strands to separate from each other. Now, free nucleotides line up with their complementary bases on the DNA strands. At this stage, the free nucleotides are only held in place by hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases. They are not bonded to each other by phosphodiester bonds. Now you'll notice something different about these free nucleotides. These are called activated nucleotides. I'm showing you here a normal nucleotide and an activated nucleotide. As you can see, an activated nucleotide contains three phosphate groups, while a normal nucleotide only contains one. In a second we'll see why this is important. OK, going back to the previous diagram, as we've seen the activated nucleotides are now lined up, held in place by hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs. At this stage, a second enzyme now attaches. This enzyme is called DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase moves down the molecule and catalyzes the formation of a phosphodiester bond between the activated nucleotides. And remember that this is an example of a condensation reaction. Now you'll notice that when the phosphodiester bonds form, the activated nucleotides lose their extra two phosphate groups. As these two phosphate groups leave, this provides the energy for the reaction. Now there are a couple of further points we need to look at. As you can see we've now got two copies of our double-stranded DNA molecule. However, each of the DNA molecules contains one strand from the original DNA molecule and one strand which is brand new. This type of DNA replication is called semi-conservative replication and we're going to look at semi-conservative replication in more detail in the next video. Now it's really important that DNA is copied accurately but sometimes an incorrect base is inserted into the growing polynucleotide strand. This means that the DNA sequence has changed. Scientists call this a mutation, and these can have very serious effects on the organism. Remember that mutations are random and occur spontaneously. We'll be looking at mutations in much more detail in a later topic. OK, now if you're following the AQA or OCR specs, then you can stop watching now. In the next section, we look at the extra material needed for the edX cell spec. OK, now if you're following the edX cell spec, then you need to describe the role of the enzyme DNA ligase. I should point out that this can seem quite tricky. In the last video, we saw that the two polynucleotide strands in DNA are anti-parallel. In other words, they run in opposite directions. And we can see that in this diagram. Each polynucleotide strand has an end with a hydroxyl on carbon-3 of the deoxyribose, and an end with a phosphate on carbon 5 of the deoxyribose. We call these two ends 3' prime and 5'. Prime. I'm showing you here a simplified diagram of the DNA molecule being replicated. So here's the DNA helicase breaking the hydrogen bonds between the bases, and the two polynucleotide strands separating from each other. The DNA helicase is moving from the bottom of the diagram to the top. Here's the DNA polymerase copying the strand on the left. Now the key idea you need to understand is that DNA polymerase can only copy in one direction. And that direction is from the 5' prime end of the growing strand to the 3' prime end of the growing strand. Now in this case that's not a problem. This DNA polymerase molecule can simply follow along behind the DNA helicase. However, if we look at the other strand, that's not the case. Here's the DNA polymerase molecule. As you can see, this molecule is moving in the opposite direction to the DNA helicase. So what this means is that as the DNA helicase moves along, this strand is formed as a series of shorter strands like this. 
At this stage, a third enzyme comes into play. This is called DNA ligase, and this joins together the shorter polynucleotide strands like this. So as you can see, one of the DNA strands is formed continuously, whereas the other DNA strand is formed as a series of shorter strands, and these are later joined together by DNA ligase. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the stages of DNA replication. Mm -hmm.